Phoenix? Y you know him? Don't expect any special treatment, Phoenix Wright. Horror snippets, huh? Well, it's October. Phoenix? Well, court will be starting soon. What? But wait! Your defense attorney isn't here yet. They're not. I'll be defending, def defending myself. What? Okay, let's do this. <laughs> nice. It's just a thing. I like that restriction, just like... I like that restriction, just like describing... Uh, it, 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 just describing it as an it or a thing. Uh, when it comes to horror, like gives it this like disconnect from, uh, you know, like, reality, if you will. And it's a good way to write horror, because you don't really want to describe... Oh, not even that. Okay. Interesting. That is actually even better than... and super hard. Uh, that is a very cool, uh, cool uh, challenge for yourself. <laughs> The court is now in session for the trial for Mr. Phoenix Wright. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, are you sure you're up to doing this? Yes, Your Honor. I will be defending myself. Understood. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth, your opening statement, please. As the details of the event is already quite clear to the court. Today we will hear the testimony from a witness to the defendant's crime. I see. The prosecution may call its witness. <clears throat> that was went far too smoothly. Why didn't the judge ask whether uh, why uh, what Edgeworth why his witness didn't testify before? It's like he already knows why. If anyone is going to write an objection about this, I suppose it's me. <clears throat> Mr. Edgeworth, you want explain owe an explanation to the court. Why didn't this witness testify against uh, Miss Maya Fay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm ever so sorry. Mr. White is a busy man, and besides, at the time I thought Miss May's opinion was all that would be needed. Again, my sincerest apologies to the court. Excellent, Mr. Edgeworth. I appreciate your demeanor. <laughs> It'll be a late uh, shower than mine. Uh. Ah. Great. He gets to show off and I get nowhere. I would like to call Mr. Red White to the stand. <clears throat> Please state your full name. You wish to know the title of my personage. Uh, your name? Yes, that is what I said. Oh dear, do my look looks confuse? Name. <laughs> These two are great together. My name is Red White, but my friends call me Blanconino. I'm the CEO or to use a more common term, President of Blue Court. Did you know the victim, Miss Mia Fey? That would be a negatory. No, I did not. You were at the Gatewater Hotel at the night of the murder? Correct. And you witnessed the murder from there? Ahem, why tell you what you already know? Yeah, very well, Mr. White, you may begin your testimony. If I can't rip this guy's testimony apart, I'm done for. What I always feel like it's the end of the world and I'm the last man standing. Oh. I hope you have made your peace with God, Mr. Lawyer. Let him have it, Phoenix. <clears throat> Let
let's see, it was about 9, oh, I believe. I was quietly prucifying, uh, that is reading to you, some papers by the window. Then I heard a bedlam coming from outside. Surprised, I turned to the building across the way. It was then I saw him, a spiky-haired man attacking a woman with long hair. Needless to say, the man was none other than you, Mr. Lawyer. I called Miss May over at once. She too was flabbergasted, of course. The victim, she... she ran away, but you gave chase. Finally, there was a terrible impaction. Then it was all over. <laughs> hmm. It occurred... If things occurred as you testify, then I'm afraid the defendant is guilty. Very well, defendant. Uh, I mean, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination. Yes, your honor. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> we have already established this, so we shouldn't need to uh, question about this. He's right there. <clears throat> so... We remember there being some uh, some wine glasses at the window, so this is a little bit suspicious. Like going the more logical way. <clears throat> By the window, you mean the uh, the one directly across from Fay and Co. law offices? Correct. That is the only window you see. Uh, and you are reading papers? <laughs> Correct. The Gatewater is a busy man's businessman's hotel, and um was a busy man who had business to do. Then I heard a bedlam. Yes, oops. Um, with irrefutable evidence. Uh, just hard evidence and uh, stuff like that because sure, he has paid everyone off, but he still has to play the game to the public. A bedlam? It must have been when you attacked her soon. We see, continue. So you were reading your papers until, until you heard that sound. But of course, I am no snoop peeking out the wind snoop peeping out of the window at night. It's no snoop. <laughs> yeah, right. You have made a career out of snooping. <laughs> Spiky haired? Needless to say, yes. What you said uh, directly conflicts with Miss May's testimony. Miss Ma May clearly stated that the assailant looked like a girl. I have always been proud of my eyesight, Mr. Lawyer. And what is your eyesight? <laughs> Counting both eyes, 40. 40? Don't add them together. I think the co uh, witness is trying to say that his eyesight is good. Hey, whose side is the judge on anyway? What did you do then? <clears throat> I called Miss May... Uh, I'm sorry. I need to continue drinking water because it is hard. I have a uh, great respect for voice actors after playing vo uh, streaming uh, visual novels. And stuff like that. This is not the first time I've done this, and like, ton of voice work. Damn, it's it hard. Uh, what was Miss May doing at the time? She had just finished watching a soap opera on the TV and was weeping openly. Did you know she had been tapping the Faye off, for, off his phone? Irrelevant. That has nothing to do with the case at hand. I cannot. I will answer the bo lawyer's bold inquiry. Miss May was acting alone when she was tapped the phone of this fey woman. You make a you make a good politician, Mr. White. Oh, I know. After all, I am El Presidente. Please can please continue. Uh, <clears throat> can you be a little more detail about that? I think it's worth knowing exactly what happened. Of course, comprende, I understand. The victim was attacked, but you, the man, ran to the left. By you, and ran to the left. You gave chase and struck her down. You, you, you see what is, what, what's going on here, Pix. 
I, I, I can see the wheel turning. <laughs> Are you sure? As you know, I am always abso absolutely perfect. Perhaps you could change your testimony to affect this new detail. Uh, yeah, you are quite correct. Uh, let's see. Oh. <clears throat> Wait right there. Mr. White, you've dug your own grave. What is this? You said the victim ran to the left, but that directly contradicts Miss May's testimony. <clears throat> she clearly stated that the victim ran to the right. Oh, ho, ho, ho. it is simply. You have misheard her. I think not. Look at the floor plans. The killer was here. And the victim here. If the victim ran to the left as you claim she did, she would have been running directly away from the door. She would have been running into a dead end. Don't you find that odd? Very strange. I did say her running to the left. I did. Phoenix. Look at his face. I don't think he's lying about this one. True. Maybe he really did see the victim run to the left. So... He did witness the killing. Wait a second! Mr. Wright! Yes, your honor. Miss May says right and Mr. White says left. Can you explain this contradiction to the court? You're right, Fix. Both are right. Both witnesses are telling the truth. For once. <laughs> ha! I doubt it. Um, rather, that does not clear up the contradiction. There is one scenario that would explain uh, their conflicting accounts. What? Obviously, the witness are not viewing the crime from the hotel. Mr. Wright, what do you mean? Yes, what do you mean? He was not viewing the crime from the hotel. If he was not in the hotel, where could he have been? In the low offices of Faye and Co, of course. <laughs> More specifically, he was standing here. There. This is where he was. Look, when the victim ran for the door, he was watching from this point, uh, to him it would appear as though she ran left. Please, this is no time for jokes and ill taste. That is where the killer was standing. Order, I will have order. Anyone disturbing order of this courtroom will be held in contempt. Mr. Wright, what are you suggesting? Rapscallion. The postulations of the defense are distortion of the truth, Your Honor. Indeed, they see to seem a far bit far-fetched. <laughs> you provided us so much entertainment, Mr. Lawyer. What now? He's laughing. The hilarity of the moment made me remember something. It appears I've been uncleared, and for this, I apologize. Mr. Your Honor, may I be allowed to testify once more? Very well, let us hear your revised testimony. Good luck. You can't fix a broken testimony, buddy. <laughs> Miss May's testimony was correct, as was mine. When you assaulted the girl, she first ran to the left, and then you hit her savagely. That is what I saw. Next, with the last of her strength, she ran to the right. You chased her and delivered the final blow. That is what Miss May saw. You see, you hit her twice. Don't you remember, Mr. Lawyer? Hmm, that does make seem, seem to make sense. Will you be cross-examining the witness testimony? You bet I will. I mean, yes, Your Honor.
so we're going down to... Present, and we have a... Let's see... That'll be this one. Our blow, not multiple blows. <laughs> Mr. White. The victim died from a single blow. What do you, do you have to say for that? Ugh. Hmm. Not my chance to hit him where it counts. Mr. White, wasn't it you that told this court you were absolutely posit perfect? Mm -hmm. I will refrain from using that phrase from now on. Your Honor, if I you could ask the witness for a new testimony. The witness is obviously confused, Your Honor. I would like to request a 10 minute break. Yes, yes, quite. The witness is confused because he is lying. I emphatically request that there be no break, your break, your honor. Yeah, we want justice. Very well. If the witness would care to revise his testimony, the crowd is on my side. No slipping out of this one, Mr. White. Mr. White. Mm, okay. <laughs> Um, well, see, <clears throat> I looked at um, the other window when I heard a thing fall. Then the next moment I saw Miss Mia went to the left. The killer, you attacked, but she dodged. Um, and then she turned and ran to the, run for the door. And then you hit her with a single blow. Thwap! Hmm, thwap indeed. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. Mr. Your Honor, my stomach, you see, it is hurting. Deal with it. This is almost over. <laughs> I love the confidence. So this is interesting. This has not been mentioned before. So what is this? You heard that thing fall? What exactly was that thing? Huh? Oh, oh, that, um, the glass light stand. Right, the one that had fallen over at the scene of the crime. Phoenix, doesn't something about that strike you as odd? So, court record, uh, look at... Huh. We don't know it's a lamp from the hotel. Yeah, that is odd. I'll press further. Mr. White. Huh? What? You're saying you saw the glass light stand? Y yes Then change your testimony to reflect that. So sorry, my bad. The witness will revise his testimony. Okay, okay, of course. Mr. White, it was impossible for you to have seen the glass stand. What? Look at this. These are the floor plans to, uh, to the scene of the murder, yes? Correct, Your Honor. Now look. If you were looking through the window of the office, this is the area that you would be able to see. Here. Well, not the stand is not within the visible area. Well, Mr. White, what do you have to say to that? Uh, ridiculousity. Mr. White, if you were in the Gatewater Hotel as you claim, you could not have seen the stand before it fell over. In fact, you wouldn't have been able to see it after it fell either. There's no way you could have recognized the blo broken the shards of glass to the light stand. So, when did you see the stand, Mr. White? It must have been at the moment that it fell. And the only place you could have seen it uh, that from is, is from inside the lay 
uh, the Fay law offices. In other words, you were at the scene of the crime when the murder took place. <laughs> Mr. White? Mr. White, you did it, didn't you? Your Honor, I, 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 Miss Mia. <laughs> Looks like we're get, about to get our verdict. Objection! That's far enough, Phoenix Wright. What? Uh, I forgot about Edgeworth. Mr. White, I think it's time has come. Shouldn't you confess your crime now, hmm? What? <laughs> I said you should confess your crime. Ergo, confess that you placed the wiretap. The wiretap? Order, order, Mr. Edgeworth. Explain to the court why you, what you mean by this. Distinguished members of the court, Mr. White is slightly confused. Allow me to explain. I really don't like the way this is headed. As you know, Mr. White is the CEO of Blue Corp. He ordered his secretary, Miss April May, to tap the law offices of Miss Faye. What does that have to do, Your Honor? <clears throat> the question is, when was the wiretap placed in the office and by who? No, you wouldn't! Mr. White, in order to place the wiretap, you entered Miss Faye's office. Am I correct? Correct! You are most correct, Miss Miles. Give me a break! Yes, in order to place the wiretap, I breached the Faye & Co. law offices. That is when I saw that accursed light stand. I think I just changed his, uh, like, the way I do his voice again. I think I've done it like three times today. <laughs> now I'm confused. Please explain to the court what this means, Mr. Edward. <laughs> Gladly, Your Honor. Mr. Felix Wright has made his position quite clear. He is determined that Mr. White knew of the glass stand, the glass stand was in the office. He has shown that there was only one time uh, Mr. White could have seen the stand, at the very moment of the murder. Thus, Mr. Wright would like to have you believe that Mr. White was the murderer. I see. However, it is a fact that Mr. White has been uh, to that office before the uh, murder took place. When he went to place the wiretap, he could have seen the glass stand then. Ergo, Phoenix, Mr. Phoenix Wright's theory is, is revealed for the baseless conjecture it is. Mr. White, you will testify to the court about this wiretapping. Ahem, leave it to me. I... I feel faint. <laughs> It was the beginning of September, a week before the murder. I had entered the Faye & Co. law offices. Of course, I had done so to place the wiretap. That is when I saw this light stand. So the question is now, do any of you remember the ones of you who saw this uh, last time? No, actually we started this case today, Never mind. <laughs> no, wait, no, we didn't start last time uh, because there is actually something in the, our, the court record that contradicts what he just said. <laughs> and this is how you were able to identify what uh, had fallen over by sound? That is correct, Pix. That is... <laughs> you are absolutely correct. Correct, that is right. I see. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine. What am I supposed to do now? Good luck, Phoenix. Do, do you have proof? 
Miss April May knew the details of Miss Fay's phone conversation. This proved that the wire tap was placed before the murder. Oh, right. Was it really you that went into the office? Or was it Miss May? An identified fingerprints which for several days all were found in the Fay and Cole law offices. Those were obviously Mr. White's. If I know Edgeworth, he's already run a check on those prints. Now, Mr. White, tell us why you went into the Fay and Cole law offices. <laughs> it's all a performance to Edgeworth. Why did you tap me as phone? This has no bearing on the current case, Your Honor. Blue Corp is a detective agency of sorts. We have a responsibility to protect client confidentiality. That is, yeah. <clears throat> Why did you notice something as innocuous as a light stand? The light stand was made entirely out of glass. It was quite stylish, so I guess it made a lasting impression on me. Such a beautyacious thing deserves attention, does it not? That is all. Damn it, there's nothing there for me to press him on. Oh well. Maybe he's rattled enough that I can bluff something out of him. Ugh. Don't tell me I've run out of ammo. I'm afraid that is as far as you go, Mr. Wright. Time has come for you to admit your defeat. You fought honorably. No more. I can't take this anymore. Mr. Wright, are you giving up? Y yes, Your Honor. Phoenix? Huh? Phoenix, over here. I know that voice. M Mia? Never give up, Phoenix. Da -da -da. Mia? Where, where am I? The waiting lobby? What happened? Oh, right. I lost the trial. I was hallucinating. Ah! You're finally awake! <laughs> uh, uh, hey! Phoenix! God! That's no way to greet an old friend! Phoenix! I want you to look at me. You are... Maya? Didn't you know that the Fae women have strong psychic powers? When you accepted your defeat in court, it appears that was enough for shock to awaken Maya's true powers. So Maya is channeling you, Mia. That's right. I'm Maya, but I'm also Mia. Now, I want you to listen to me, Phoenix. Maya never gave up. You can't either. That's what I came here to tell you. But, but we don't have much time, Phoenix. Now, listen. You've already won. Huh? You haven't received in the court record, right? Uh, oh, yeah, the one you wrote Maya on. Phoenix. White wrote that, not me. S so, what do I do with it? Look at the front of the receipt. The front? It's a regular receipt. Looks like it's from a famous department store. One thousand dollars. Wow. Big spender. Item? Glass light stand. Date of purchase? September 4th. September 4th? That's right, Phoenix. I bought that light stand the day before I was killed. Whoa. Now, what did Mr. White say in his testimony? I'm not going to repeat this, I've already said this. He said he would light stand a week before the murder. 
There you go. I think the court is about to reconvene. Go do it, Phoenix. You know you're innocent. Now you just have to 